Heart disease is one of the major problems that we work with. Heart disease is still the number one killer in the United States, both for men and for women. There's been a lot of treatments that have been developed and some new medications that are useful, but what they've done is prolong the duration of life, which is nice, but they have not eliminated heart disease as the number one killer. It's still the same. Studies have shown in the last few years that there are several factors that are the cause of heart disease. Heart disease is preventable and it's reversible. There are many doctors who've worked with lifestyle changes to reverse heart disease. There's Pritikin, there's Ornish, there's a number of others as well, and they have all shown that with selected patients, people with heart disease, they've been able to use lifestyle changes to prevent the progression of it and actually to get rid of symptoms. And the things that have been identified are very simple items. It has to do with high cholesterol, has to do with overweight, has to do with lack of exercise, has to do with having too much salt in the diet that increases blood pressure, which is a major cause as well, has to do with the absence of the right kind of nutrients such as magnesium and fish oil and things like that to work to help the heart work better. So it isn't just medicine that's the answer. The real answer relates to making the lifestyle changes to reverse the factors that cause heart disease. It only makes sense that we should also exercise seven days a week, and it doesn't have to be the same thing. It can be a variety of items, but what I emphasize to people is find something that you like to do instead of something someone tells you to do that you don't like because you won't do it. So if you like to swim, that's the thing to do. If you like to dance, if you like to jump up and down on a trampoline, if you like to run, if you like to ride a bicycle, whatever it is you like to do that's exercise, that's the thing to do. And if you like variety, if you want to do gymnastics one day and Tai Chi the next and yoga the next, by all means do that because it's important to get it in. It's important to do it every single day. That's what I do. That's what I recommend to people. Heart disease is one of the areas where it's really important to do laboratory studies so you know where the person stands. You can't tell from looking at someone what his cholesterol is going to be. You can't tell what the blood sugar is going to be. You can't tell a lot of things that are factors that are known to contribute to heart disease. So we do blood studies. We want blood studies on these folks. So there should be a lipid profile performed. This is a measurement of cholesterol level. The LDL are bad cholesterol. The HDL are good cholesterol. The triglyceride level. There's fancier tests for cholesterol as well that we sometimes do when it's not exactly clear what's going on. We do something called C-reactive protein or CRP, which is a protein that measures inflammation in the body. High CRP levels have been shown to be directly correlated with the evidence of heart disease. So a lot of times we'll measure the CRP and measure the cholesterol numbers and put those two together, which gives you a better idea as to a person's risk. Other things like blood pressure, Blood pressure very much contributes to heart disease when it's elevated. So you want the blood pressure to be in the range of 115 over 70. That's the ideal. That's where everybody should be. That's where very few people are. High blood pressure is defined as over 140 over 90. And a lot of people are above that. And between 120 over 80 and 140 over 90 is considered prehypertension. So a lot of doctors work to get people lower than those numbers, and we do as well. But I think the main thing is to get folks below that 140 over 90 range. And you can do it largely by cutting salt down in the diet. There's a drug called Lipitor, which is now selling over $10 billion a year, that single drug alone which is an amazing number, and it keeps growing because cardiologists give it to every single patient, and most internists give it to many, many of their patients, and we use it sometimes also. I think a statin drug can be a useful thing if you're not successful with lifestyle changes, or if a person has a very serious cardiac condition, if they've just had a heart attack and you're working to bring things down quickly, a statin drug might be the way to go. But lifestyle changes are very effective in controlling cholesterol. I was able to reduce my own cholesterol a few years ago by 100 points in one month simply by making dietary changes. I went down from 250 to 150 in one month. So it can be done, and it can be done even without supplements just by changing what we eat. But supplements are also very effective, and that's the main thing we go to in handling cholesterol after we address diet. 
So niacin is very effective at lowering cholesterol. In fact, it's probably the best thing around for raising the HDL, which is a good cholesterol, and lowering triglycerides, which statin drugs are not very effective for. So we use niacin usually as a sustained release, so it doesn't cause that much flushing. If you take it every day after a while, there isn't any flushing. So after about two or three weeks, you can take niacin, sustained release, 500 milligrams, and raise it to 1,000. And you raise the dose as you need to to get the LDL cholesterol as low as you want and the triglycerides as low as you want and the HDL hopefully upwards a bit, which it does do. We also use fish oil, which is primarily effective for lowering triglycerides. And I recommend 1,500 milligrams of EPA and DHA every day. Those are the active ingredients in fish oil that have an effect on the health of the arteries. So niacin and fish oil together are the major supplements that we use for controlling cholesterol and triglyceride levels. There's another item which is uh, called a natural statin, and that's something called red yeast rice, which we also use, and I've seen people lower their cholesterol levels 50 and 70 and 80 and even 100 points with red yeast rice alone. But usually I'll use that together with the niacin and with the fish oil, when fish oil and niacin alone have not been effective, we'll add red yeast rice to it. So here's a way of circumventing the commercial statin drugs altogether, and it's uncommon for us to require a statin drug when those other things are being done and when the person is working to change his diet around. <laughs>